The word drone has become synonymous with the American military. Its use in a news headline almost always draws comparisons to foreign intelligence gathering and even advanced missile attacks. But drones are being used in much simpler, yet still impressive tasks. Here in Iowa, drone photography and videography are on the cutting edge of images one can produce in your own backyard. While the legality of drone use is still being ironed out, some Midwesterners are busy capturing images that only a few years ago would have required a helicopter. All across the nation, unmanned aerial system, or drone enthusiasts, are using remote-controlled helicopters to capture our world as we've rarely seen it before, from above. Before the emergence of small drones, aerial views such as these were only available via large helicopters, manned by commercially licensed pilots. Today, literally anyone can purchase a miniature drone and start filming the world around them. Joe Stone and Brad Perdue, two friends from Ogden with a passion for RC helicopters, quickly decided to purchase a drone after seeing a flyby video of the Space Needle in Seattle. I just loved how the drone went around everybody. Everybody was waving to it. I mean, it was that night when I saw him, I just ordered it off Amazon, told Brad what I was thinking about doing, and we both decided this, this would be fun, and after that, we were kind of hooked. Kind of had an idea of showing people the Midwest, maybe parts that they didn't know existed. We thought, well, we know some spots in Iowa and Minnesota that we could expose to the world through YouTube. Dozens of Iowans have similar stories, with pilots capturing attractions from border to border, including the State Capitol Building, the Mississippi River, the Campanile at Iowa State University, and many more. As for Joe and Brad, their first location was one of central Iowa's more scenic bike trails. The first spot we picked, Trestle Bridge. We did it, put the video online, thinking maybe a few hundred people would watch it, and we got 50,000 views, and we were just blown away by that. Since the High Trestle Trail, Joe and Brad have traveled across the state, filming all kinds of attractions, including Boone's Kate Shelley Bridge, the Grotto of Redemption in West Bend, and even video of farmers working in their fields. While drone pilots can fly solo, Joe and Brad's two-man system is ultimately what keeps them from damaging their equipment and flying where they're not supposed to. We always fly with a spotter, so when he's watching on screen, he's gonna be looking at mainly what shot he's taken, and I'm just kind of the, the guy that shouts and is annoying, you know, where the trees are, what you're doing, you know, and just try to keep them safe, just make sure we, we're following all the rules and everything. And the rules for drone flying are constantly changing. As of summer 2015, the FAA guidelines allow hobbyist pilots to fly over public spaces as long as they maintain line of sight with their drone, keep 400 feet from obstacles, steer clear of manned aircraft, and stay a minimum of five miles from public airports. I mean, when we first got it, we were scared to do anything. Now we'll, we'll get a little bit more and more courage as we go along, flying under bridges. I mean, you have to be really safe when you're flying. Having two sets of eyes on their quadcopter has helped Brad and Joe steer clear of trouble so far. But for less cautious pilots, the general ease of drone piloting can quickly fly them into areas they shouldn't be. Well, it's actually very easy to fly as long as you have a good satellite connection. It'll hold itself steady. Your left stick here uh, is your elevation, and then left to right on the left stick is which way the quadcopter is facing, and then the right stick is all about movement. When you lose your satellites, things can get a little bit tricky. It'll start to drift on its own. And that's where the RC experience helps out a lot. 
With open sky abundant in Iowa's rural areas, the duo can easily set out to film attractions like Ledges State Park. We just captured some of the, the hot spots of out here. One was a lookout point over, over the river. Uh, the other was called Lost Lake. And then with the creek winding through the canyon, that's kind of everyone's favorite part. It's just a nice area with uh, a lot of good memories as kids. Joe and Brad's Phantom is one of the more popular models on the market, but there are all shapes and sizes of drones, with some pilots even opting to build their own. Across the state in Cedar Falls, that's exactly how full-time photographer Tim Dodd got into aerial photography, building an extremely powerful, albeit unreliable, drone. I mean, I wanted to have the best camera up in the sky you could, but realistically what it came down to is I was making so many compromises in the flying, in the flying of it and in the flights, that, uh, that it really was so much simpler just to actually have a turnkey solution that was out of the box. You know, you make a compromise with the worst camera, but considering I can change all the settings, I can change the ISO and shutter speed and all these different things while it's flying in the air. So it's almost like having more control over a worse camera than having no control over a better camera. But even though Tim's drone doesn't have a state-of-the-art camera, it still captures some magnificent footage. No matter if you're a professional photographer or remote control enthusiast, Tim says the allure of drones is capturing images that are otherwise impossible to create. You're always looking for that, you know, viewpoint or that vantage point that other people don't have, you know, how many times have you been like, oh, I wish I could just get up there, you know, or here, or here. And that's, I think, the root of, you know, why aerial photography is so appealing is because you can do that. You can get a totally different vantage point and literally fly a camera up in the air and get something that, you know, that a new perspective that, that other people aren't able to get sometimes. It's amazing. And there's so, you know, there's so many different tiers that you can go from something that's teeny tiny and $40 and you can spend $150 get something a little more significant. So I think it's, it's a really easy thing to get into it.